Well, Lakshmi Eye Institute uh, is a tertiary care eye center. It's in existence for the last 25 years. And it's more of a referral center. So we cater to a very large section and different strata of a society where we have patients who come from rural areas as well as people who come from urban areas. Many of them are referred here for second opinion or for uh, complicated cases. So the kind of cases that we see here is a wide variety. And the one more advantage that we have here is that uh, many of them do not come with any, any preconceived idea of uh, what kind of vision they are going to get after the surgery. So it's easy for us to really educate them and mold them into the kind of vision that a newer technology can offer. So we can give it. Well, I'm using Raven uh, EMV for last uh, almost six to eight months. And Rainer, obviously every ophthalmologist is aware of because this company comes with the, the greatest legacy any company can have in implant surgery because that's the company that uh, you know, gave us the first implant. I've been using uh, uh, Rainer lenses for quite a while and uh, uh, it's a solid platform on which this lens is based and the injector system i'm sure anyone who has used it would vouch for it it's an excellent injector system the lens is performed well and talking about monovision we all are used to monovision for a long long time we have used it with our patients of myopia who are on contact lenses successfully and then when the EDOFs came, the monovision was tried in a modified way called micro monovision. And we, are, we were quite aware of it. But this was the first time that Raven came with a lens dedicated for extended monovision. That's a, that's a beauty of this lens. So it was natural that if you have to opt for a lens which would reduce the dependency on the glasses, yet at the same time use that monovision in a more technologically advanced way then uh, Raven EMV was the obvious choice. Well, uh, every everyone will have his own way of evaluating a patient for uh, you know lenses like uh, EMV Raven. Basically it comes into the EDOF lenses. So when a patient comes, he goes through three different phases. First, I assess his background, his spectacle usage, his need for spectacles, for near vision, and his present style of using it, and how much keen is he in getting rid of glasses. Then I do my own assessment to, to understand whether he is fit enough for one of these lenses. Once I've done that, then there's a simple question that I put forth and I get most of the answer. I ask him, would you mind uh, using glasses occasionally to read a small print? He would say, of course, I don't mind. So that ends my discussion. But if he says, but doctor, is there an option for me not to require glasses? then I explain to him what are the other options. Otherwise, this patient is very ideal for me for one of the monovision or one of the EDOF lenses. And obviously in that, uh, Raven is one of the top choices. Well, uh, again, it's a, uh, a very individualized way of explaining. First, I tell him about the need of glasses after you become 45 years old or when you get operated. Once I've explained to him why a person needs, then I also tell him 
that there are lenses which uh, would always reduce your dependency on the glasses. I explained to him how with a monovision, with a monofocal, in spite of the best surgery, he still needs to keep reading glasses, which can be reduced if you go in for modern technology. Then I tell him that there has always been a method called monovision in the past, which has been further improvised with the newer technology in a lens where we can use lenses in the two eye with slight difference in the spherical power to get you to almost see read at the intermediate distance but at times you may be lucky enough to even read a small print but uh, otherwise most of your intermediate work you can do without glasses so that's the advantage which uh, this particular EMV lens offers you or any Edof lens offers you so sometimes uh, you know these are the things which appeal to the patient and uh, they kind of uh, uh, like to go in for that. Well, in a way, those who are aware of the technology, they do ask if uh, can we get rid of glasses after the surgery. But majority of them, of course, it depends on the uh, area where you practice. They just want a good vision or they come for, you know, uh, troubled vision where you offer them good vision but when you ask them most of them would be happy to get rid of glasses but the the group of patients who are truly good for trifocal that number is always a small percentage but what's really going to fill in a gap is this EDOF or uh, EMV uh, lenses because they are more forgiving and they have a larger landing refractive zone because of which the chances of satisfaction with these lenses is much higher as compared to lenses which offer you total spectacle free vision. And total spectacle free vision, once you talk to the patient and explain to him what instead Edof offers with occasional use of glasses, they normally convert themselves into accepting EDOF lenses and the age group cannot be said because at any age patient may opt for this especially the younger crowd or the crowd which is active on the digital media they are the ones because they have read about it they would certainly want to ask if there's an option of getting rid of glasses totally so in my practice they are the ones who would go for total independence and the ones who are a little elderly, where I would prefer them because the most of their work is intermediate work, they would be ideal for my uh, EDOF category or uh, these EMB lenses. Well, talking about dysphotopsia, none of my patients have ever complained. And obviously, I don't expect them to complain because these are, you know, advanced uh, monofocal lenses where I, where I don't expect any uh, this photopsia anyway. Talking about uh, their refractive outcomes, nearly 74% of my patients have achieved N8 or better for near and nearly 80% have got N8 or better for uh, intermediate. So, my my small series of 66 lenses used over last uh, six to seven months have really given me very satisfactory results see most important is not how much they see but how happy they are with the vision they get and by that, that yardstick i think my uh, patients with emb rayon are rear even are really doing well and happy and you know I have absolute no hesitation in offering that technology because it's a wonderful technology. Well today the market is flooded with EDOF lenses and most of them offer good results but because of the blended zone and because of the you know larger lending sweet spot you know in these lenses I can still afford 
to make my less dominant eye little more myopic and still not be worried about missing out on the finer details for distant vision. So that makes me a little more liberal with this lens and the, the transition of this lens between near and distance is what really uh, you know, makes this lens stand out. And when you, when you compare you know, the platform and the injecting system and the track record, this lens and plus our affinity and uh, past experience of uh, monovision, I think this and this is the only designed lens for monovision. So obviously this stands apart uh, in this uh, class of uh, lenses. Well, in fact, uh, since this lens doesn't have a downside, it only has everything to gain. If someone who's really, really into these premium lenses and once they're, they've you know, kind of uh, got used to using toric lenses and are happy with uh, toricity and they're, they're okay with these counseling pattern that's required for premium lenses, getting into EDOF lenses or uh, EMV lens it's just another extra step, so I don't think that's any big issue at all. It all depends on how sensitive or how critical you are uh, in looking for astigmatism. Because once your toric practice goes up, then you realize the benefit of toricity in your lenses. And you start looking for more and more of them and try and correct them. So by that yardstick, uh, my, my practice has a very high percentage of uh, toric practice as well. So I think uh, as of today, I can tell you 25% uh, of my patients would require toric lenses. But that varies, but there are practices where the toric usage is less. They may be using some of the alternative methods to uh, take care of the toricity. But uh, to me, 25% um, of my EDOF practice is with toric lens. We have uh, quite a few uh, injector systems uh, in the market today. So when you define an injector system, it's purely on the ease of loading, ease of injecting, and the hassle-freeness. And by those yardstick, I think one of the one of the top uh, two or three uh, injector systems is Rayner injector system. So I compliment the company for coming out with a very easy kind of a system. All the best.